Good morning, everyone. We are the group assigned for the Pasig City Hall, and we will be presenting our proposal for the renovation of the City Hall. In this presentation, we will be showcasing not just our design and ideas, but also the innovative minds of the Benilian Architecture student. Four different design concepts from four different students created within one school term. Before anything else, let us have a brief background of the project. Our project revolves around the renovation of the City Hall, both its interior and exterior spaces, and in addition, its very own park. We were entrusted to come up with our own design with the idea of strengthening the Pasig's foundation in a post-pandemic environment. As a group, we attempted to activate the Pasig City's community and encourage coexistence of the different users by providing various public and multi-purpose spaces and creating a holistic and positive working environment for the employees. The main challenges of this project are the following. Safety and accessibility, lack of public spaces, space programming and layout, poor ventilation, not pedestrian and PWD friendly. A disclaimer, our design interventions may vary from person to person in terms of priority, but our goals in reaching the end result are the same. Now, we give the floor to the presenters. Hello, sir or madam. William here, and here's my rendition for the redesigned Pasig City Hall. So just to be clear, I will be presenting the design concept on how the design was derived and the envisioned spaces only. So now, let's jump into the presentation. For my design concept, it was first derived from the sun and wind data as shown in the video. The sun path represents the yellow curve within the circle, while the wind path is represented by the arrows in relation to the Amian and Habagat. There are two reasons why I'm showing you this data. The first being natural ventilation, based on the data as presented on the screen. Given the current orientation of the existing building, we could harness the flow of the wind to reduce the consumption of energy from air conditioning to lighting system. The second reason is related to a post-pandemic solution. According to my research, to mitigate the spread of pathogens or diseases, either invest in a entrance-level technology such as a thermoscan or a quick mechanical ventilator, or an architectural approach which is to have the wind be the one that ventilates the space. Now, for the massing of the City Hall. The first diagram is the existing form of the, of the City Hall. The next diagram is punching a hole in the middle to assist the wind in passing through the interior. Lastly, the third diagram shows the division between the spaces from the private to the semi-private and to the public spaces. If you're seeing a video of moving building components, that is called kinetic architecture, which has existed for a long time. It serves a purpose depending on the typology of the place. So going back to the diagram, we have the fins that opens when the weather is good and closes if there's a storm brewing or if the city hall wants it closed. These fins are controlled remotely in a room, may it be automatically or manually. Now for the main highlight of this segment, which is the presentation of the perspectives. Also a disclaimer, the views that you will be seeing are based on the existing structural plans such as the placement of the columns and the slabs. So this set of scenes capture what a typical person would see upon entering the city hall. Compared to the existing plan wherein the spaces were a bit confining, here we could see that with the reconfigured spaces, the lobby became more open while inviting natural ventilation. Next, we have the waiting area, wherein the seats are replaced with wooden blocks to recreate the feeling when you're in the church. Soft to sit on, but hard to sleep on. Next in this scene, we could see the typical back corridor and also the scale of the vertical fins. This open area can be a showcase of different art installation and such. Also, this opening opens from the ground floor where the food court is located up to the fourth floor. Now here is the Envision Food Court. The place is optimized for food inventory access, at the same time slightly increases the space for ongoing visitors. Next is the typical office setting, more specifically located in the east and west wing of the building. As you might observe, yes, there are no vertical fins due to this orientation. And also to note, reflective glass will be installed to make the visibility one way. Lastly, for the interior perspective, we have the mayor's office where the space became larger while having a convenient access to the adjacent rooms. 
the ceiling and the wall design became the defining feature of the room. And also, behind where the mayor sit is a view of Basig. Finally, here is the facade of the city hall. The design of the current quadrangle will be retained but slightly elevated. I didn't put any obstruction in between the quadrangle with the sole reason that its openness will serve a purpose in public events or public assembly. Now I would like to give the floor to the next presenters. Greetings, I'm Vanessa Bianca Tavanito and I will be presenting my sheet. We were assigned to redesign and create flexible spaces in Pasig City Hall while considering the user's needs. The information that I'll be discussing would be the project matrix, design approach, site development plan, and perspectives. For your project matrix, the goal of this project is to create flexible spaces and have designated areas for the people to use, while also integrating the city library as the people's aquarium and other spaces needed. The objective is to apply being sustainable in the building space while also creating a safe environment for the people. The strategies that could maintain them is by fully utilizing the spaces while adapting to achieve the flexible space to different programs of the structure. The design for this project is to maintain the building's main structural materials while also incorporating the concept of sustainability since Pasig City is known as the Green City by placing plants inside the building and at the rooftop, while also having a rainwater harvesting area, making use of the curtain walls to achieve a good use of daylighting. Here shows the site development plan of the structure and lot. The lot has a big open space that can be used like social activities and showing off the building's facade. The idea presented is an attempt to embody the idea of our relationship to nature surrounding the site which has various meanings that reflects the cities known as the Green City. Here lies the perspectives of the site development plan of Pasig City Hall with a fountain, park, and an activity area. The entrance lobby is located at the ground and the second floor. You can find the food court at the ground floor. The typical corridor that can be found in all of the floors in the building. You would come across the public toilets in all of the floors of the structure. Located at the ground floor, you can access the parking area. You can find the typical staff office work areas in most floors of the Pasig City Hall. The session hall is found at the 7th floor. The conference room could be found in most offices in the building. You can find the mayor lobby at the 8th floor. Along with the mayor lobby, the mayor's office is located at the 8th floor. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. Now I would like to pass the floor to the other presenters. Hi, good day. I'm Nicolas Remo and I will be presenting my proposed city hall design. In this video, I'll be covering the design analytics, design concept, design application, site development plan, and lastly, the perspectives. For the design analytics, who are the users of the project? The users will be the government officers, office personnel, office staff, and walk-in guests. Based on the users, they would need private offices, working areas, comfortable workspace, and comfortable seating for lounge and leisure areas. The concept of my design is urban forest and designing a breathable workspace by infusing greenery to industrialize the structure. Wherein the main focus is to create a human-centered design, maximize energy saving and sustainability, reduce environmental concerns, and lastly, show the identity of the city hall. 
for the design application in creating a breathable workspace i've used glass walls to create a large open areas and the usage of glass to create an open and breathable space i also used sustainable materials like wood and ceramic tiles on the different parts and layouts of the city hall in infusing greenery i've decided to use plants and vegetation to reduce the carbon emission on buildings. Here is my proposed site development plan. The courtyard features a fountain in the middle, a proposed sitting area on the left, and the pond on the right. I removed some circular elements in the previous design to make some green spaces and made seating adjustments and pathway for more human interaction. It is a simple yet clean design. And now, I'll be showing my rendered perspectives of the proposed city hall design. Hello everyone, I'm Audrey Claire C and I am the last presenter of our group. As you already know, the four of us have different design concepts for the City Hall of Pasig and mine is about community activation. So let's jump right into it. Based on the site analysis of Barangay San Nicolas, Pasig City Hall is located in the City Hall complex and its surroundings consist of Pasig Mega Market, Pasig Elementary School, commercial areas which are the area shaded pilot and a few residential areas. Within the city hall's 500 meter radius, you can see more commercial areas, more schools and more residential areas, and a few tourist spots at the edge that create a busy and lively environment. However, there are only a few public spaces contradicting the high number of people who visit the district every day. With that, I have centered my design based on community activation. I envision the Pasig City Hall as a place not only for attending government-related matters, but also where citizens can enjoy public spaces. This strengthens Pasig's community foundation by allowing various people to come together and enjoy the city. I have five main goals for the City Hall. First is safety and accessibility which will be done by encouraging walking, biking, and using public transportation. Second one is better air quality and lower temperature. We'll do this by providing more access to nature and adding courtyards. The third one is the coexistence of different users, which will be done by providing public spaces. The fourth one is an active and lively building facade to make the space livelier and more inviting. And the fifth one is a positive working environment. And we will do this by providing co-working stations for the staff. So here is my site development plan. As you can see, I have added more pedestrian lanes, bike tracks, and bike stair stations, PUV lanes. I have removed the gate and the fence in the front and moved the trees to the side to make the park wider and more inviting, allowing people to enjoy the green space. 
The park can serve as an outdoor multi-purpose space for holding events as well. To form my perspectives, first we have the front view of the building. I chose a minimal design for the exterior to give emphasis on the public spaces, particularly the open plaza or park and the library which is situated on the second floor. Next we have the lobby. We have a big open space and the design is also simple. You will see a lot of natural materials from now on since I wanted to make the city hall feel welcoming and not too intimidating, especially for the younger people. Then we have the cafeteria, which is also on the ground floor. Again, lots of food and an open area with a view of the park. Now we have the library. This is the balcony view of the library. As mentioned earlier, this will be the center of attention of the building facade. We have curtain walls and a variety of spaces for all kinds of people. You may also have noticed local furniture designs because of course we want to have a sprinkle of building culture here and there. This is one of the conference rooms in the building. There are quite a few multi-purpose spaces in the building bigger than this of course, that can be turned into convention halls, theaters, art galleries, and etc. Next we have the staff workstations. Now I know this isn't the usual working area, but I would like to propose co-working stations for the staff to create a more positive working environment. This not only creates flexible and open working areas, but also boosts productivity and makes friendlier settings. Lastly, we have the mayor's office. For the mayor's office, I used a minimal design and again incorporating the Philippine culture through furnishing. That's it for our group. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to redesign the City Hall of Pasig and for taking the time to watch this.